Thunder was back in business today with over 1,000 lightning strikes offshore and inland of the western North Island. And you'll need the raincoat tomorrow anywhere from Northland to Otago with hail possible in parts of the north. Your forecast just ahead. Right now, it's 6 o'clock. is One News with Wendy Petrie and live from Rotorua, Simon Dallow. Kia ora, good evening. A fitting farewell to Sir Howard Morrison, one of the great New Zealand entertainers. Kua ngaro atu ki te ki te ka nohi, kua hoki koe ki to ukaipo, oki oki mai haere rā, whakaoti atu Howard Morrison. The Rotorua mist lifted and the sun came out this morning as thousands turned out for the man who's lit up the lives of so many New Zealanders. Tears, song and laughter, just what Sir Howard would have wanted, rang out loud and clear as tributes flowed. One News has extensive coverage of an event that brought the city to a standstill and I was one of the many privileged to be here when the funeral service began. It was as if the whole city was wearing a funeral shroud. But then the spotlight burst through onto Te Papai Ouru Marae as Rotorua prepared to say goodbye. Sir Howard may have been one of the city's favourite sons, but to the Morrison family he was so much more. A husband, a father, a patriarch and a leader. My dad. What a proud moment to say my dad in light of the exemplary, stupendous excellencies that are surrounding us today, celebrating the kaleidoscope of experiences, of character, of personality and charisma that is my father. Music and culture were always going to play a big role in the ceremony, from traditional hymns... to the soaring voice of an opera diva. It was a uniquely New Zealand occasion. Reflecting, in many ways, Sir Howard's life. He wasn't a celebrity who came and went. He knew his country and its people because he travelled the length and breadth of it for decades. He was comfortable with us. And we were comfortable with him. Thousands filling his home marae, creating the crowded atmosphere the legendary performer revelled in. He loved the attention of the crowd, but he loved to be in the crowd. The nation loves him, and we love you for loving him. And yet our love should not be buried with him this morning or this afternoon. The love that we reserved for him and for his family should be carried on into those around us in our own lives. In his heart of hearts, he was a man of great giving. And he lived by the motto that living is giving. So Howard, your life is done. Thank you for sharing the stage with us. <laughs> And as Sir Howard's casket moved back into the spotlight for one last time, he started his final journey. And that journey gave some old friends a chance to say a final goodbye to their old mate. Sir Howard's funeral procession passed some of his, passed some of his favourite places here in Rotorua, like the Citizens Club. Melissa Stokes was with club members today. She joins us now live. Melissa. Simon, I'm overlooking Sir Howard's hometown tonight and everybody that we spoke to who lined the streets to farewell him said that he had done great things for this city. But the loveliest thing that I saw today was his send-off from the Citizens Club. It was his final curtain call and his hometown had front row seats. Basically to pay my respects and my children's respects to a great man. He's a good man. He's done a lot for, the, for Rotorua and New Zealand. He's an icon. We all love him and miss him. We went back to Rotorua's Citizens Club and found they had Sir Howard on high rotate. Oh. 
outside, they say you could set a watch to the entertainer's visit every Thursday. He drinks every Thursday night, yes. So no, he comes for lunch. Oh, for Thursday. lunch. Oh, yes. OK. Yes, yes, he does. <laughs> and I understand it's the Oyster Bay Chardonnay he drinks. Is this what you two ladies are drinking today? Yes. yes. And he enjoys a pork chop for lunch. As he inched towards his local, his mates tell me the last shout is on them. You're stopping the hearse so we, <laughs> so we can do this, so we can pass these up on. My mic, I don't get My mic, my mic. Normally they'd be having a Chardonnay in there right about now, so very appropriate. Well, I cheered him off with a glass of Chardonnay. I certainly have. To the club, he'll always be centre stage. It's all in here. Yeah. And he would have liked the Chardonnay. Yeah, he did, yeah. Loved it, yeah. Uh, we're certainly going to miss him. Not just as a showman, but as a great mate. So, Melissa, what have club members got planned to honour their old mate? Well, they've just got automatic doors at the club, Simon, and they're planning on putting a photo of Sir Howard above those so that he's always looking out over them. And later this week, on a Thursday night, of course, the night that Sir Howard used to go in for a drink, they're going to hold a karaoke night to celebrate his life. A fitting tribute, they say, to the man who sang so well and for so long. No one will be able to sing as well, though, will they? Thank you very much. Melissa Stokes here in Rotorua as well. And it wasn't just at the Citizens Club where they said goodbye. Thousands lined the streets of Rotorua. After leaving the marae, Sir Howard's hearse headed past the sound shell, the convention centre, and along Fenton Street, before stopping off, as we saw, at the Citizens Club. Then Sir Howard was taken to Kowai Cemetery in Ngongataha, where he was finally laid to rest. And Sir Howard's widow has publicly paid tribute for the first time to the man she was married to for more than five decades. Paul Hobbs talked to queer Lady Morrison. He joins us now live too. Paul. Simon, for six long days, queer Lady Morrison kept vigil beside her dead husband's casket. Today, she finally laid him to rest. And a few hours ago, I caught up with this incredibly strong woman who still manages to keep everything in perspective. It was a lady in sorrowful song for her beloved knight. I'll really miss him. I will miss him. He'll miss my growlings. Speaking for the first time publicly since the death of her husband, queer Lady Morrison says she'd shared a wonderful week with Sir Howard before he died. It was good, because we've been away overseas to Rarotonga. We had a great time. We had a great day together on the Wednesday, and then, then I knew he passed away. The couple had been married for 52 years, Sir Howard the showman, his wife the steely resolve behind it all. I believe that the greatest legacy that he leaves behind is his family, without a doubt. And that starts with mum, our matriarch, the toka, the rock, the pautoko manua. She is the supreme example of the wife, the mother and the nan. The day taking its toll, but there was still a sense of pride. Today was just absolutely stupendous, and what an honour to be his daughter. Despite the loss of her husband, the future for Lady Morrison is surprisingly clear. I'm going to do the <laughs> New York Marathon. So, yeah. When's that? I go on the 26th of October. I do it on my birthday mm -hmm. when I turn 72. The plan was always to go with her seven girlfriends, leaving hubby at home. She wanted to come too, and I said it was a woman's thing. <laughs> and this is one woman who can count on her family's support for the road ahead. Paul, a huge gathering of Sir Howard's whanau and hapu. What's the family got planned for tonight? Well, tonight, Simon, the family planned to bless the family home and uh, have a few quiet drinks together. Although Lady Morrison did tell me she wants to sneak in a training run. Paul Hobbs, thank you very much. And that is it from me here in Rota for the moment. Uh, on a day where the Marae Forecourt was packed with thousands of people earlier on, right now it's very, very quiet as those who have returned from the cemetery are inside gathering, eating kai. Very soon we expect the, uh, the guitars and the songs to break out in that truly Morrison-like celebration. More to come from here. I'll be back with more later in the bulletin. And if you'd like to check out the amazing...